the biggest news coming out of London. Pro-Palestinian protests are turning London into a no-go zone for Jews, the counter-extremism czar said as he warned that extremist groups have gone unchallenged for too long. Writing for The Telegraph, Robin Simcox, the Home Office's independent advisor on extremism, said the government and its agencies had powers to combat extremism but had failed to tackle groups that lurked just below the threshold of being terrorists. He issued the warning after Rishi Sunak urged protesters last week not to let the extremists hijack your marches and with Michael Goff preparing to announce a broader definition of extremism. Mr. Simcox said the permissive environment for radicalization developing in the UK meant that activities such as pro-Palestinian protests, which he said leave parts of the capital off limits to Jews, had become normalized. He warned that the same applied to Iran's sponsorship of British schools and mosques, the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas support for British charities and extremist TV channels operating on UK soil. We have not betrayed democracy if extremists are no longer able to operate television channels, he said. And we will not have become an authoritarian state if London is no longer permitted to be turned into a no-go zone for Jews every weekend. All these things and more have become normalized in the UK. It is why I have warned of a permissive environment for radicalization developing that needs urgently addressing. These groups have gone unchallenged for too long and have used their time well. They are now embedded and influential among communities. He made the comments in the lead-up to Mr. Gov's announcement next week of a new definition of extremism to enable the government, universities, councils and other bodies to ban funding for and engagement with Islamist and far-right groups if they are judged to be promoting extremist ideology that undermines British values. It is understood that Mr. Simcox believes police should consider placing tougher restrictions on demonstrations and that such a move would not signify authoritarian desire to crush the protests but a recognition that the heart of London could not indefinitely host large and intimidating protests. One option he is understood to have canvassed would be whether the protests could be held in a different part of the city or could be restricted to being static, as has been required of demonstrations by the far-right English Defence League. Mr. Sunak has urged police to take a tougher stance on protesters, telling officers that we will back you when you take action. Sir Mark Rowley, the Met Police Commissioner, subsequently defended his forces' handling of protests, saying that we have to police the law as it is, not as others would wish it to be. However, Mr. Simcox said extremist groups could be shut down or curbed by ministers and regulatory agencies such as the Charities Commission, Ofcom or the Department for Education, but had not been. Government has more power to tackle extremism than it sometimes thinks, he said. The Iranian government does not have an inalienable right to run schools and mosques in our capital city. It is not an unalterable democratic principle that Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood must be allowed to run a multitude of charities. Mr. Simcox said the government needed to be bolder and move faster in tackling extremist groups, even if they were highly litigious in challenging any attempt to crack down on them. That means the government. Be willing to accept higher legal risk if it means implementing policies that keep us safer, he added. This is particularly pertinent when it comes to disrupting the activities of those groups who propagate extremist narratives but who lurk just below the terrorism threshold. It is understood he believes that universities could take a tougher approach by banning extremist speakers or shutting down events and that the government could do more to refuse visas to hate preachers on speaking tours of the UK. It cannot only be government who stands up to these extremists be it Islamist, extreme right-wing, extreme left-wing or other ideological manifestations but it has the most resources and must take a leading role, he said. The government is not expected to publish a list of the extremist groups that could be caught by the new definition, which encompasses any group or individual that promotes an ideology that undermines the rights or freedoms of others. However, it is understood that ministers are likely to use parliamentary privilege to name the groups in the Commons. It is non-statutory, not a new criminal definition, so would only affect who government bodies, officials and ministers could engage with and fund. It would define extremism as the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on intolerance, hatred or violence that aims to undermine the rights or freedoms of others.